Hello and welcome to the DIY Creative. I'm Robin and this is our second tutorial. I'm so excited about this one just because it's something I've been wanting to do for a while. I um, I, don't, I don't know if you like candy corns or not, but some people love them and some people despise them. But I like using them for home decor during the fall. And this candle is my inspiration for this project. I have been wanting to do a candy corn glittery pumpkin for a while and I found this jack-o-lantern here and it's got like you know where you put lights in the bottom and the face I got this one at Michaels but you can find them at local craft stores um, you know either with the face cut out or you can do plain ones too and you know just find something that you like and something you know that fits your taste of what you would like in your home and let's get started. Okay, supplies for this project. You will need a ceramic pumpkin, of course. You will need acrylic paint in yellow, orange, and white. You will need some glitter. This is fine and extra fine glitter. You can use chunkier glitter if you want to or mix it together, but we have yellow, orange, and white glitter. And then we have gloss Mod Podge and a high gloss varnish from Liquitex Professionals. Another tip is to protect your surfaces. I have this old canvas here for the pumpkin and then this table I painted on a lot of times so I know it comes out really well. But you can put paper down and then also I would suggest to wear an apron just because acrylic paint can sometimes be hard to get out of clothing. All right, first thing you wanna do is go ahead and figure out where you want your candy corn kinda to get started as far as like the gradient of the yellow and the orange and the white. And I think I maybe want to keep it around here. Yep. Okay. All right. And then step two, we're going to go ahead and start painting. We're gonna start with the yellow here and start going around. Okay, so now we got this done. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I decided that I want to do the inside of the mouth and the nose and the eyes an orange color. Uh, and uh, once we get started with the orange, we'll do that. And I'm not doing like perfect lines, I'm just kind of creating like a line. I just kind of marked where I wanted. And then once I'm done with the orange, I'm gonna come back, cause this acrylic paint dries pretty quickly, pretty good. So I'm gonna come back and do a second coat. And let's go ahead and start the orange here. Okay, so now with this pumpkin, we have, I, if you notice, I left like a little bit of a line here. Well, whenever we do our second coat, I want to go ahead and we got the orange all done and that's okay if we got some messiness on here, we're gonna be painting over it anyway. Paint, that's the thing with paint is you can always, like it's easy to fix because it's paint, so it's not a big deal. But what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and create like a gradient over this. Um, so I'll go ahead and start the second coat. Once we get to this line here, then I will show you uh, where, um, what we're gonna do on this part to kind of not make it look like such a harsh line. We can blend it a little bit and make it look a little bit better. Thank you. 
Okay, so now to go ahead and blend these two colors, and we're gonna do the same with the white and the orange on top, and we'll paint the white here in a second. What you wanna do is take a little bit of the yellow here, and we're gonna go, and bring it to the camera a little bit better. I go like this, and then bring on the little bit of orange on the top here. We're gonna blend it in with the wet yellow paint. And then we'll take the other one, get some yellow. It's all about blending, blending the color to where it's just not a harsh line. You wanna make it like just a really like they kind of fade into each other a little bit. All right, now um, after doing some touch-ups, things like that, I'm gonna go ahead and start the white part on top. So we let this first white coat dry. We're gonna work on the second and the blending. And then I'll go back over and touch up any parts that need touched up. One thing I did while that was drying is go ahead and get like a new water for the white paintbrush so it doesn't mix in with those other ones. And then also while the paint was drying, one trick you can do is get either press and seal or like a Ziploc bag, like a sandwich bag or whatever fits the paint tray or paint bowl that you're working in and just cover that and then it'll keep your paint um you know still wet and it doesn't dry it out so um all right we'll go ahead and we'll start painting this white coat and then we'll do some blending all right now we're gonna work on the blending so we have our orange and we have our white i'm gonna move these out of the way and we're going to start with the white and we're going to go around. We're going to kind of just make, go over the orange just a little bit in one section. And then we're going to come back with the orange. I'm going to get a new beauty blender. And by the way, everything, um, as far as like supplies and stuff that you need, I'll put on the Amazon link. It might not be the same brand as far as like the acrylic paint and everything, but, um, I'll put all that down there, what you'll need for the project in case you want to, um, buy it off of Amazon. Okay. So see, we got the blending there. Looks really, looking really good. And then after that, we'll come back with the white. And we'll blend that in. And we, we just, what we do is you wanna just keep blending until you get um, the look that you're wanting. But um, once you get everything blended, then we'll come back, do touch-ups and you know things like that, spots that you might've missed or messed up or whatever. Paint is very forgiving, and that's what I love about painting. Um, painting furniture, painting, like, you know, things like this. It's just, like, paint's just really awesome to work with. So 
so now that I've got this part done, I'm going to go through and fix all the parts that, you know, need fixed or, you know, have paint, you know, like right here and stuff like that. But it's okay. We got paint. We're going we're gonna to fix it. And then we'll let this completely dry and then we'll start the glitter. Okay, now we're ready to go on to the glitter part. You could leave it like this and seal it like that, which it's really cute. Um, but we're going to add a little bling here and get some glitter going. Okay, so what you want is your um, glitter and you want Mod Podge and you want a brush for each, um, each thing because sometimes the glitter can get on there. So you take your, and you want little cups. You want some kind of cups or something to put the Mod Podge in. And always like wet wipes or a wet paper towel or something. So that way you can um, keep your area clean. So we're gonna start with the white glitter first, okay? And get one of the, these are like sponge brushes. They're pretty cheap and easy to find. So, um, but I'll put a link down below so you can find it if you wanna help support the channel. So, um, okay, so, and you got your Mod Podge here, and then we're just gonna add the Mod Podge. And this is a, a gloss Mod Podge, um, which I think helps the glitter glow a little bit. There's like a super gloss Mod Podge that I'd like to try. And I'm just curious what kind of sheen it has. I've used the matte and I've used gloss before. I've used fabric. I've used the dishwasher one. And if you miss a spot, you can always go back and fix it. Add more glitter, more Mod Podge. Okay, so we want to, this Mod Podge dries, eh, I'd say fairly quickly. So you want to kind of work fast to get that area filled that you want. And we are going over those blended lines. Okay. Okay, so we got that. Get rid of the stem here. Okay, and then you want a tray because glitter can get messy. I probably have glitter all over my house <laughs> from other projects um, that I've done. So, okay, so it's important to try to keep clean. So you got your white glitter and then we're gonna start sprinkling this on. And, and use something underneath so that way it catches the the glitter. And just shake, 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 shake. That looks so pretty. Yeah, I'm very happy because the glitter is making me happy. Okay. All right, and shake that glitter on as much as you can. And then we'll tap off the excess. Get that back of that stem here. Okay. And what I like to do is take my finger um, where I put the Mod Podge, and it kind of helps set the glitter in there a little bit deeper into that Mod Podge. And you're gonna get glitter on you, but it's okay. You will be all right. Glitter makes everything better, right? And like I said, if there's any parts that you need to come back and touch up, no problem. We'll come back and touch them up. All right. Now we're going to tap this excess off. Okay, so tap off the excess. And then... My little trick is taking a piece of paper, okay? And you want to tap your extra glitter 
onto a piece of paper. And then once you do that, then you can take your glitter jar and there is less wastage of your glitter. This glitter can get expensive, so you wanna like keep as much glitter as you can. and onto the orange layer. Okay, now we're gonna shake off the excess. And see those parts where it's like blended? You kind of just, it, it, it'll show that paint underneath, so it'll look pretty good. You won't have to worry about blending the, you can take your finger if you want to and go over it, but you won't have to worry too much about it. You can just take your finger, see, and knock that down a little bit. I'll just blend those glitters in a little bit better. Knock off that the excess in the spots you don't want it. Like this part's like pretty much dried up here, so the orange will blend in there a little bit, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. Just go ahead and use your finger to manipulate it. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get the uh, get this extra off. You can take like an extra like paintbrush, like a dry paintbrush like this or something, and knock it off. And then I'll get this clean up, and then we'll start on the yellow part. Okay, so we're gonna work on the yellow layer now. There was a couple of spots that I went ahead and um, read it on the yellow and let dry that I saw, and now we'll work on this. Okay, so now that we've got this all set in with our finger and everything, we're gonna let this completely dry and um, go ahead and go through and make sure if there's any spots that we missed some glitter, things like that, do some touch-ups um, and then use a brush to dry, um, you know, get it off. And then right now we're gonna go ahead and clean the, this glitter, let it dry, and then we're, we'll go ahead and come back and seal it using the high gloss varnish. Okay, so now, we have, I did a few touch-ups on the glitter where I needed, um, where I thought I needed some more glitter. And we are ready to go ahead and seal. Um, we are using a Liquitex high gloss varnish. And I found it keeps the, um, the glitter really good. Um, I've used Mod Podge before and I feel like it kind of dulls it a little bit. And so this high gloss varnish really works to keep the glitter sparkly, so. One quick tip is to wear gloves, um, which I didn't, um, but I do suggest to wear gloves because like the Mod Podge and the varnish or the sealer, you know, if you use any sealers or anything, it'll get stuck to your fingers a lot more than like the acrylic paint and the glitter is a little bit easier to wash off. Also the high, var um, high gloss varnish has a little bit more of an odor to it. So do apply it in a well ventilated area. And we'll go ahead for this. Okay. And um, I'm going to start on the light layer first. And then, and this stuff is really watery, um, but it does a good job. And um, on this, I'm gonna do two coats of sealer. And I think on the bottle it said to do three hours in between. And so I'm gonna follow what they say on here. The Mod Podge, it says like 20 to 30 minutes. And so I'm gonna let this cure in between that time for that long and do a second coat. And this stuff's really watery, like I said, so you don't need like a lot on your brush and you can like take some of the excess off. 
Now, any of you crafters out there, let me know what kind of things you seal with your, your pieces with. Maybe I'll try, I'll try one of those too. So after I got the glitter touch-ups done, I went ahead and brushed it off. And I also blew it um, off with a blow dryer. Um, <laughs> but that could get messy, so just be careful if you do the blow dryer. In between each step of like drying of the paint and then the glitter and things like that, I do clean up and I like to make sure that I keep my brushes pretty clean. And sometimes it'll drip. Let me just pick up that drip and then rub it back in again. Okay. And then now, and you don't need much of the uh, varnish. It's, it goes pretty far. And so now I'm going to do this bottom yellow layer next. I'm going from light to dark on the varnish just because I want to keep the white glitter as light as possible and I want to keep the yellow glitters yellow and then I don't want like a whole bunch of, of the dark orange going into the lighter glitters. And like I said, if you get any drips or anything like that, you just pick it up and move it around. And with this sealer, you wanna like not brush so fast and so heavy, just because um, this sealer can bubble and show bubbles. Like I can see like a few bubbles. Just go over it and just make sure that you don't shake this bottle. And you don't have to use this. This is just something that uh, this sealer this is a, something I think that just brings the glitter out in the pieces I use glitter and need like a high gloss finish. But if you think you have something that works better with glitter, you can do that too. It's up to you. Yeah, and anytime you see any bubbles or anything like that that come up on the varnish, you just brush them out, lightly brush it. And I'm, I'm not gonna do the inside of the eyes um, and the mouth and the nose until I get finished sealing the first glitter. That way it has like a better seal and the glitter's not gonna get inside the eyes. I kinda wanna keep the eyes just a solid orange with no glitter in there. Okay, and so now I'm gonna do the eyes and the nose and the mouth and then do a second coat of sealer and then we'll be done. All right, here is my glittery candy corn pumpkin. Turned out so cute, here's the back. And please like and subscribe, and let me know down in the comments below, what kind of design would you put on your pumpkin? Thank you so much for watching um, my second tutorial. And again, happy fall.